So that's our brief introduction of what a box plot is. So let's talk about how we can use StatCrunch to, to construct one. To make a box plot, we'll select the graph menu and then select box plot. The first thing we'll do once the window pops up is select the variable or variables that we want to work with. So when we're constructing box plots, we can select one or more variables and graph those all on the same graph and we'll eventually take a look at doing that. You'll want to check the box that says use fences to display outliers. So if we go back up to the graphs we looked at just a second ago, this graph, well actually both of these graphs were created with that option checked. So outliers are only displayed if they exist, but here we have that break where the fence stops at the maximum usual value, and then we have those additional dots. If we didn't check that, this line would have extended, and this fence would end at that maximum value. So it's an option to use fences to display outliers, but I would recommend doing that. Um, and just as a note, sometimes that type of graph, where we use those fences to display outliers, sometimes referred to as a modified box plot. Some of the questions in the homework will reference specifically constructing that modified box plot. Others won't, but in either case, we're just saying use fences to display outliers. And then another box, which is optional, you can check draw boxes horizontally. So by default, StatCrunch will output these graphs in a vertical orientation, so they'd be directed up and down. Um, completely optional. If you want to do vertical, that's fine. I just like the horizontal view. Um, I think it makes graphs a little easier to interpret. And when we start looking at two distributions or two box plots at the same time, uh, I think it's helpful. It makes it a little easier to compare some, uh, some of the differences and similarities there. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. We've got two different data sets. We're going to reproduce the graphs that were on the front page. So in our first example, we have data on the number of points per game the Bears scored in the 2012 regular season. With this data already typed into StatCrunch as variable one, I can select graph, box plot, the variable that I want to consider, use fences to identify outliers, and draw boxes horizontally. Again, that's an option. And then clicking Compute will give us this box plot that we ended up with. I used some of the other options on there to add labels to the main graph, add labels to the x-axis. Also, those are optional if you're producing a report, things you would want to include. Um, but you could go back to that Edit menu for any graphs that we create and always use these graph properties options for those. So constructing a box plot is very straightforward. There aren't any options to set really except for displaying outliers. So we could do exactly the same thing with our second data set. In this case, the number of medals won by these different countries in the 2012 Summer Olympics. Again, I've already got this data entered into StatCrunch, so I can just select box plot, var2, select use fences to identify outliers, draw this horizontally, and I generate that box plot. So again, since I opted to display outliers using the fences, I get those three points that are separated from the rest of the graph. If I uncheck that option, so now I'm no longer gonna use fences to identify outliers, what I would get is again, a continuous graph that stretches all the way to that maximum value. So something we just want to make sure that you get in the habit of is using that box. Make sure you're using fences to identify outliers um, as you're answering different types of questions and interpreting graphs.